Okay, uh, we're back with the second part of this video. Um, we're actually going to go over the um, configuration of the switch. We're going to uplink it to a Cisco 3560. We're going to set up a couple VLANs and we're going to see how all that goes. Um, in the lower right hand corner of my picture you're going to see a uh, um, picture of how I have this wired. Uh, basically I've got the gigabit port on my Cisco switch uplinking into port number 48 um, and the Buffalo switch. So see there's nothing else really plugged in there. I do have my console cable in the Cisco switch so I can show you some um, you know some good information about what's going on here as we configure this so the first thing I'm going to do is run the configuration utility the switch comes with a configuration utility it's called the business switch configuration tool so I'm going to open that you just click next and what it does is it probes your network to see you know where this switch is and what the IP address is so uh, you can see it right here it's the BS-GS 2048 uh, with the IP address of 192.168.1.254 I don't need to really do anything else it'll create a nice little shortcut for me on my desktop if I wanted it to but I, I, this is the default IP address and the default username and password is admin and password so I'm just going to cancel out of that and I'm going to go ahead and pull up my Firefox window and from my Firefox window here I'm just going to type in the IP address Alright, not five, sorry, one. Once I get here, I'm just going to log in with the default username and password. And of course, you're going to, if, if you're deploying this in a business environment and you're using multiple switches, you're going to want to name this, okay? The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to name this switch. Uh, we're going to name it TFO. SW1. Actually, we're going to name it um, TFO BUF SW1. Location uh, TR11. Um, and contact John Lay. save that it's got a name um, the next thing we're going to do is change the passwords because that's pretty important um, so I'm just going to change the password on this and apply now the other basic setting you want to check is make sure your date and time is right Okay, see this date and time is not right, so we want to make sure that's right, especially if we're going to hook this up to a syslog uh, server or something like that. Uh, we want to make sure we have the right date and time, so I want to fill this in here. Get that applied. And really that's it for the basic management. Um, I'm going to show you under here, this is where you would go to update your firmware. Uh, you can have a dual image kind of scenario here where you can have one configuration in one and one in the other. You can back up your settings and restore your settings here. Initialize is, is also reset uh, basically so what you're going to do if you want to reset the switch you would you would click that and it would reset everything to defaults. You can also enable or uh, disable the reset button on the front of the switch. You can check out the logs here if you want to. You can also set up a syslog server here which is highly recommended. Um, network diagnostics, you can ping an address or trace route an address. And the other really cool thing is you can actually test cabling with this switch. So, you know, if you think you might have a bad cable somewhere, you can run a quick test on that. Uh, Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a basically a tagged port um, or a trunked port on this switch. Uh, I'm going to set up VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. I'm not going to configure an IP address on VLAN 2 on this particular Buffalo switch. Um, I've got that on my configuration here. Okay. They show IP interface brief. So we've got VLAN 1 and we've got VLAN 2 there. You see that. Um, if I do a show 
Um, I'm doing Cisco, so Cisco CDP. I'm not going to get anything. Uh, no neighbors. However, if I do a show LLDP neighbors, I will see something because um, I have LLDP configured on my switch, my Cisco switch, and it's on by default on the Buffalo switch, which is a pretty nice feature. Um, I can even go details if I want, and of course then I can see the MAC address of the switch, the port it's connected on, um, things like that. Now I can I can configure these other not advertised options um, under the LLDP settings on the Buffalo switch, but I'm not going to choose to do that at this time. Um, the other thing I want to show you is the, show, uh, the VLANs, okay? So we've got uh, two VLANs, we've got the default VLAN and we've got the test VLAN. And we do not have any trunk ports on here uh, currently um, because we don't have any trunks. That's another thing I wanted to mention. If you have an uplink configured as a trunk and you plug in one of these Buffalo switches, it won't necessarily auto uh, configure a trunk on the other end on the Buffalo side. So you should set them up as access ports to begin with on your Cisco side and then um, you know, set up your, your trunk or tagged port on the Buffalo switch and then come back to your Cisco switch and set up the, the trunk, which is, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go in here to VLANs and I'm going to go to VLAN settings and I'm going to add VLAN 2. I'm just going to name this test. Alright, I'm going to apply that. Now, notice on my picture here, I've got my uplink plugged into port 48. All right, so I have VLAN 2 here. Um, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to um, I'm going to untag this uh, port number one because I'm going to use it as a demonstration. I'm going to plug a laptop into port number one. Uh, I'm going to apply that. Right, check this box. Apply that. VLAN ID 2 test apply. Alright, so I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm going to go to VLAN ports and I'm going to change this to uh, 2 for VLAN 2. And I'm going to apply that. that on port 2 now, right here, and we need that's why I did wrong, so I have to click that, click edit, and then do untagged, and then apply. Alright, so now we're good, we've got VLAN 2 um, configured untagged port Port number one. So we can plug a laptop in there in a minute to do a demonstration. Now my uplink, I'm going to make it a tagged port. And again, I said my, my uplink was in port number 48. All right, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say this. Sorry, here. And I'm going to say edit. I'm going to come down here to port 48, and I'm going to make it a tagged port. And I'm going to apply that. Now I am going to lose connectivity to my switch when I do this. here that I'm going to lose connectivity because what I've done is I've turned that into a trunk port. Um, Buffalo switches support dot one Q encapsulation by default so I'm going to go to my Cisco side now and I'm going to configure T and I'm going to go into interface gig 01. I'm going to switch trunk encapsulation dot one Q hit enter and I'm going to switch mode trunk shut it down. I'm going to no shut it down. All 
All right, I got my interface coming back up. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try this again here and see if I can access it. May not be quite up yet. Take a minute. Okay, it looks like the and it looks like the device is back up. We also see VLAN 2 came back up, which means we've got a trunked port now. Um, and we go back to this, and it does look like it's up, so I'm going to need to re-log in. And my password was changed to that. Okay, so go back to basic, go to VLANs. Let me go to see here where we've got this uh, port number one on VLAN 2. Um, and we've got that assigned here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug a device into port number one. I'm going to plug a laptop in, but before I do that, um, just you know, take note, I've got the switch, I've got the device that I'm plugging in is actually plugged in over here. Let's see that there that blue one it's in number one and that's going to a laptop okay um, so what I'm gonna do here is turn on debugging for DHCP server events um, and I'm just gonna show you your uh, my DHCP pool here see my pool is 192.168.2.1 um, and again if I do a show IP interface brief you'll see that VLAN 2 is associated with 192.168.2.0 subnet um, and you'll see through my cabling that we have to go through this trunked port here to get to the Cisco to get an IP address so uh, basically this is just proving that the, uh, that the that the trunk port is working properly um, so I've got the events turned on, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wake my laptop up over here, and I've got this this window up for you to see. So let's hope this this works okay. I'm gonna plug this in. And it is on, but we did not pull an IP address, so something went wrong here. Um, let's see what we did wrong. I've got. I don't think I want this one. Definitely want that to be tagged. 48 ports tagged. Maybe we have to we have to go into here, I think. And we have to tell this one, port 48, that it also needs to be tagged. VLAN 2 needs to be tagged on that port as well. Okay, so apply. Let's try this again. There we go. So it says DHCP assignment of 192.168.2.2. So what I had done wrong there is I just had forgotten to include VLAN 2 in that trunk port uh, by making it tagged. So. Um, Basically, you want all your VLANs. If you want it to go across that trunk, uh, um, that trunk, you have to tag it. 
So, anyway, that's a little bit about setting up multiple VLANs on the um, Buffalo uh, BS GS 2048. Um, I did want to show you a couple other things real quick, though. Um, something I was a little disappointed about is spanning tree protocol and loop prevention. So, um, I'm going to unplug this laptop here and I want you to just look at what happens. This is just the default configuration. I haven't changed anything. Um, so if I plug this in here, uh, make sure I got a good angle on my uh, webcam. You can see all the lights there. So basically what you're going to see is this thing is just going to start flashing like crazy um, when I create a loop back. The whole thing's going to go nuts here in a second. See how the lights are blinking in, in, in unison? I just created a loop back. This thing's mad. I mean, you can see my Cisco switch is starting, starting to tell me that there's a loop back somewhere on my network. It's mad too. It's probably going to shut that port now at some point, um, that gigabit uplink. Um, but I was kind of disappointed that the switch didn't have, you know, automatic loop detection enabled. So, uh, you have to actually go in there and turn spanning tree protocol on. Um, and you'll see right now, I can't even access the switch. It's just going to spin and spin and spin because I've got a loop back. So, I'm going to have to unplug that. Oh, yeah, I get my connectivity back to my switch here. And I'm going to turn on um, spanning tree protocol. And then I'm just going to turn on normal spanning tree protocol, hit apply. Um, and then I'm going to do the same, same loop back here in a second. I'll create the same loop back. As soon as it gets done. It takes a second for these settings changes to take effect. So we got the uh, spanning tree protocol set up now. Um, so if I plug it in, it's gonna it's gonna keep that loop from actually occurring. Um, it doesn't disable it like you would see in a Cisco switch. It doesn't turn one side off, um, but it does isolate the loop in such a way that it doesn't uh, negatively impact your network traffic. You can see the lights are behaving normally, um, which is a good thing. So, so just be sure to, and I would make sure that you enabled that first thing. Um, the very last thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm not going to go into QoS or security or any of that kind of stuff right now for this video. It's just an introductory video to the switch, but um, it's important to, you know, understand the difference in the terminology here. The, um, you know, if, you know, if we talk about a standard network infrastructure term, it would be a lag port, LAG port. Um, or we would, um, you know, say LACP as far as the standard goes. On the Cisco side, we might say port channel or ether channel. Um, but for some reason on Buffalo, they say port trunking, uh, which is odd. Because um, a trunk port is a dot one q encapsulated trunk port in my opinion, but I'm a Cisco engineer, not a Buffalo engineer, so I'm not sure why they named it that. But you can, you can aggregate ports here, uh, link aggregation, to create bundled ports, to create you know, more bandwidth. And, and you would want to make sure on the Cisco side that you would, you would set that up with LAC, um, LACP as your lag protocol or, or standard. That way it, it operates normally on both ends. So um, other than that, the switch is performing pretty well, and I don't have a whole lot of issues with it. Um, you can set up SNMP if you want to. Uh, as far as management goes, of course, we would go in here and we would we would save our configuration if we wanted to and export it. Um, that's really it. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.